Our session today is all about crafting a gleaming evening cityscape, and I'm really ex excited to see some of the techniques that you're going to throw our way today, Davey, because I don't believe this is anything that we've ever covered in the past. So this, these will be all new tips and tricks for everybody. So with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. I'll put my microphone on mute, so just let me know if you need me. And uh, also let me know when you want to answer some questions. Great stuff. Okay. Thanks, Sonia. Sure. Um, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome, welcome to the webinar. Um, as Tanya said, this was uh, originally supposed to be about a year ago. So uh, we, we, well, I think I had some uh, problems with my audio. So apologies to anybody who joined in last time. Um, so the the idea of this is it, it's uh, an environment design um, example. Um, it's particularly based on man-made um, environment. It's a, it's a city design. The, the reason why I picked this one, it, it's not something that I do all the time, but um, it was something that kept cropping up on YouTube. Uh, people were really interested in, in this particular technique. Um, and people kept asking me, can you explain how you do this? So I thought this was a good opportunity to um, talk through some of the, uh, some of the techniques um, in creating this particular environment. So um, first things first, I think before you even attempt something like this, it'd be good to get familiar with um, some references. So you can you can either obviously take some photos um, if you if you live near a city, or you can just pull up some stuff online. It's um, it's always good to have some real life references to, um, to just to refer to give you some ideas. Um, I normally have uh, a couple of pictures on another screen, so um, you can refer to those. Um, the I'd say the main difference between obviously a the man-made environment and um, a natural environment is this one is basically made out of engineered shapes and straight lines. That's something that you really need to kind of keep in mind when um, when creating this. Obviously, a, a natural environment, it's all it's all wavy lines and textures and stuff. But this is all it's all straight lines and repeat patterns. So that's um, that's just a, a good way of thinking about it because it's it's quite a a daunting thing to tackle if you've never done it before. So if if I just close the, the whole thing down, and then we'll we'll go through and we'll pick each um, section up one section at a time. Okay, so generally the first thing I do um, this is this is just something that I do with all paintings is um, drop a background layer in, gets rid of the white screen. It sometimes can give you a mood to play around with. Um, so I've just picked a fairly sort of blue sky there with a, some kind of gray clouds over the top. This would then be the horizon line. Now, this is important when you, when you are trying anything like this that has a lot of straight lines, um, a lot of depth you need to know where the horizon line is. So that needs to be dropped in there almost immediately. So those two lines there, um, that's the, well, that's, that's the pyramid that I dropped in there. Um, so these, these are all the, um, the background layers of all the, of all the buildings furthest in the background. I can open these one at a time. Um, 
these were just were just squares really. Um, they they don't need a lot of detail, and most of this is just um, one section copied over and over again, and then it's just layered with um, a slight value change. And you can see how quickly you can just build something up using the the same the same information over and over again. So that one there, it's just, I've scaled it right down. The value has been dropped, but it's all, it's all the same information that's on this particular layer here. Um, and just to try and create something like that, you can um, just go to the rectangle select. If you click on the add selection, I'll just, um, as a new layer in here. And it's just the case of throwing in some random shapes. And then you can you could always copy these over and over again if you if you don't if you don't want to sit there creating loads and loads of these, but you want to have a few few variations, few widths, few heights. And then we can just fill these in. Um, I'll just color pick one of these colors. While that's still selected, you can change change the color slightly and just give a few of them um, a little bit of variation. Now you'll notice that some of these have got stripes on the top. Um, that's where I'll just lock this layer. Um, that's where I've basically just gone over the top with um, this is a custom brush let's take that off actually for a second so that's the stamp of this brush it's it's a custom brush there's nothing particularly special about it it's just um, it's just a few a few lines and if I just drag this down I can I can create a nice texture which I can use for the side of the building and that basically just gives us the the floors and then the if you're using a, a lighter color over a darker color you then get the variation of stripes so you've got like floors and windows um, I'll just get rid of that one but yeah that's that's basically just the same thing um, repeated over and over again we keep keep adding these in that one there it, it's still the same information um, all I've done with that one is take the uh, pre transform um, well we're on a different layer here now but I've just dragged it up dragged it up like that um, and then you're just getting more and more variation all the time from that same initial group of um, boxes that you put down. You can see you can you can squash these in, you can stretch them out. Um, you could always flip them as well, flip them horizontally, so they're not always um, all in the same order. Um, but yeah, there's uh, there's a bunch of these here. Uh, that's that looks like a little spire that I've put in there. Um, a good technique for creating something like that would be again, I'll just creating a new layer. Um, is create, uh, create a square, fill the square in, and then if we, if we rotate it, um, I think I can just rotate this. And then I can just cut the bottom. So 
So now we've got a perfect triangular shape. Um, we can obviously free transform this as well. And we can pull that up. I'll just scale that down a bit. But it's it's quite interesting the, the amount of shapes that you can create just from using the uh, the free transform tools. Um, perspective as well, we could like you can always transform that. And that's, um, that's pretty much how I uh, created the, the pyramid as well. The the one side of it's got light bouncing off it. So we're thinking the lights come in from over here. So with the with the pyramid, um, I've just duplicated the, the layer and then rotated one over a little bit more um, and then just put a little bit a little bit of a highlight on the uh, on the top there. Um, I don't know whether there's any questions already just on on this particular part. Um, so the couple of questions that come in. Well, one was kind of curious if you had any inspiration from Blade Runner for this. <laughs> Blade Runner, yeah. It's. Um, it, I mean, initially it was just going to be a fairly standard city and then I thought I wanted to give it a little bit more of a, a sci-fi or sort of fantasy feel so yeah I ended up sticking the pyramid in the background as I was doing it I was thinking this this is um, looking a bit like Blade Runner. Um, <laughs> I was, I was, no, it was just a question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah it's uh, I mean it's, uh, it's fantastic um, environment design in the uh, the film sequence, so yeah, it's I think it's inspired quite a lot of people over the years. <laughs> That's a good thing. You see so many people painting from movie inspiration. Yeah. Um, the other question is, and because I've got a big panel open here, there was just a question about the harmonies panel, which we see there. Um, do you ever use that at all? Uh, work? Yeah. I I do. Um, I I used it a lot in uh, Painter 2020. Actually, I, I for some reason I haven't set it up properly um, in Painter 21, but I did have I did have more of these open. Um, but yeah, I mean it is really useful. Obviously, all all these values all go together, and and that would be the perfect opportunity to. Um, just change some of these colors um, and select some. You've got some of the warms and the cools there. The, this um, particular layer is all is all kind of blue because of the the background, obviously the the atmosphere um, just tends to get rid of all the color. Um, but yeah, I, I I do use it. It's um, yeah, I just haven't got it. <laughs> I haven't got it set up. Oh, so you can open up, yeah, the other options from the the library manager. So the little, the three lines in the top right hand corner there will let if you oh, wanted yeah. any of the other harmonies yeah, open. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, now we have more questions coming in. Um, Joan is wondering if you can show how you did the side of the pyramid. Um, the side of the pyramid. Oh right, okay. Um, let's. You, you can still. Can you still see this bottom panel? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so. So this that that part would just be how I've flipped the the square, and then I've cropped the the bottom, and then I basically copied the the same the same shape. Um, but the only oh, let me open that one. The only real difference is um, for it to stick out. Basically, moved the uh, that little uh, cursor there, and I just swung it round a bit. Um, 
yeah, it's probably a diff slightly different scale, but I mean, you could you can you could pull it out as well, make it make it even bigger. Um, once I've once I've moved it, it's just a case of locking um, locking that layer, and then I mean you could use the uh, the, the glow brush on the or something like that. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, just just to get that that top to really really kind of uh, pop, but. But yeah, it's basically it's just the same shape as the uh, as the original one, and then I've changed the changed the value slightly. And then Elaine is wondering, um, is the city brush one of your custom brushes? The question yes. is, can it work in Painter Essential Seven? Um, but we don't have the ability to exchange brushes with artists in Essential Seven. I guess uh, I have to say no to that. Yeah, I was going to say it's, it, you can't you can't import custom brushes, can you? In seven. No. Um. But but yeah, they they're just um. They're they're quite they're quite easy to um create. I think that that one's a slightly different one, but. And that was another question. Um, how do you create your own brushes or stamps? And I, I know that might be more than you were planning to show, so I don't want to throw everything off. Um, if you weren't planning to show that, might be something we could address at the end. Um, yeah, sure. I, I think I've, I think I've copied one anyway. Um, I mean, basically, you have to, you have to put them. Onto um, the canvas, the canvas layer. So, uh, oh, I've still got some things open. Um, this one, I mean, that's that's one that I think that's kind of like a spare. Um, to to just create them, I mean, I, I've just kind of I've just used something something like that, and then I think it's just um, uh, save variant, is it? It's, oh, sorry. So I can't. <laughs> I thought it was captured tab. Ah, uh, sorry, no. I I need to select it then. But I haven't created some uh, custom brushes for a while. Okay. Um, I think. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. It's just select um, and then capture capture tab. Um, you can play around with the with the spacing, and that that will basically give you um, the right the right spacing between these. Um, yeah. You can obviously use them like um, on a horizontal or the uh, the vertical by by locking, um, but um, but yeah, it's it, they're they're pretty. Pretty standard, um, quite quite easy to create. It's best if you if you actually keep them quite simple. Um, if they're they're over complicated, then you tend to spot the repeat pattern more. But if they're um, if they're more simple, then you can kind of like customize them a little bit more just by going over them a few times, and you, you get a lot more kind of variation. But, but There's yeah, a lot of control in all of the brush adjustments, like you were saying, yeah. with the spacing and the angle. Yeah, so you guys can pretty much create whatever you want. Um, okay, before, I don't want to sidetrack too much. I'm just taking a last glance at the questions, and 
Brandon is wondering what size document you usually work with. Um, I've, I've generally got it set at um, 19, 20 by 1080, and then I use about 300 DPI just in case it's um, it's something that I might want to print later on. Right. So it's it's a fairly okay. kind of standard um, standard size. Great, thank you. And then there was another question asking how you made the clouds. I don't know if you're planning to go into that or not. Uh, the clouds, that's, um, yeah, that, that was just, um, that's my custom brush that I've, <laughs> I've been using for, for quite a long time. Um, if anybody's seen my my YouTube channel, <laughs> um, there's, a, there's a video on how to create that. It's, oh, um, okay, great. So, guys, the, the YouTube channel that I put into the questions panel, you can go there to look for a video on how to create the clouds. So with that, I'll let you continue on. <laughs> I'll quit throwing questions out for the time being here. Sure. Okay. So, uh, okay, so we've got... Um, oh. So we've got the background layer in there, and it's a get rid of some of this. And it's just a case of <clears throat> repeating the the same process um, with the with the next layer. Um, this probably looks a bit different, but this kind of area here, it's it's kind of the same thing. We've just got a little bit more texture that has been added over the top. This stuff down here is just kind of information that's left over from uh, pre-transforming some of the um, some of the buildings. Uh, there's a little bit of um, a layer that I've I've tried to introduce some sort of roads leading the eye back into the painting from from the foreground um, is always useful when you're trying to create a lot of depth but this um, this layer is a lot warmer in color so it's it's a lot closer to us so the the color is um, is a lot warmer the some of the values are starting to get darker as well um, I mean, if I open it up, you'll you'll see it's all in um, it's still all in um, like separate layers. But the the, the texture is fairly random. That's just been thrown on here because it's going to get covered up by um, by the next layer. But this is um, this is basically how it's kind of thrown together. We're still using the the same buildings that are in the background, and we're just continuing to copy, um, change colours slightly, change values slightly, and keep building them up and building them up and building them up. Um, you can always um, drop more behind if if you um, if you notice that there's some gaps, create a create a new layer on the top and then drop some more, drop some more around the back. I think there's there's like a like a building here that I've, I've kind of just dropped in, dropped in the background there. But this, um, you'll see that this one is actually something that was over here in the foreground. I've scaled it down, taking the value right down, and then it's it's just kind of sitting in the background there quite nicely because it's it's starting to uh, match up with everything else. Um, so if I if I now open this, these are still these same buildings from the background. So it looks now like there's hundreds of these buildings, but they all stem from those first, say, 12 blocks that I've put together. And then they've just copied over and over and over. Um, we've stretched some of them out. We've obviously um, pulled some of them up. Um, and now we're starting to add more textures in the in the foreground. 
um, and a little little bit more detail. We obviously didn't need the detail over here. It's just texture information, um, but in the foreground, it needs to start to make a little bit more sense. But um, this, let's see, a lot of this is just textures laid over the top. So this building here is, I think it's probably this one here, but you, you can probably spot it around there somewhere. And then I've just dropped the texture over the top. And now all of a sudden that's that's changed um, and it and it looks looks completely different now. Um, the roads I've thrown in here in the middle. This again is to draw your eye into um, into the painting, create depth. Um, there's some information that I've put underneath to try and look like these. These are suspended. You've got these kind of columns underneath, and they're all kind of um, interlocking with each other. These are these are just good things to um, to practice to to make sure it doesn't look just completely flat. Obviously, we've got a lot of vertical lines going up and a lot of horizontal lines, but we we need to show the um, the ground as well. The actual the actual roads basically help determine where the bottom of these buildings are, um, and you can see like some of these roads are elevated, and you can see the buildings um, through through the gaps. Um, lampposts are a, a really good thing. You can drop these in. Obviously, they get smaller as they go off into the distance. That helps create um, a sense of depth. So you can, you can have some really kind of big ones um, right here in the foreground. Now, if you start... Davey, what are you using to draw with tablet or um yes yeah, it's, um it's a wacom wacom tablet um it's a uh, cintiq um the fancy it's, one it's a really old one but it, <laughs> um, it still works i mean it's great I, i'm i'm really uh really happy with the uh the use i've got out of it to be honest um, I think it's yeah, it's probably it's probably about seven years old or something now. I'm I'm still I'm still really um, really into using it as well. I, I did think about updating it, but I don't know. It, it, it still it still works fine. So uh, still kicking, no reason. <laughs> <laughs> I will vouch for the fact that the tablets last a long time. I don't have a Cintiq. I have an Intuos Pro, but. Mm. Yeah, they're yeah, really good yeah. quality. Yeah, I mean they're they're engineered for professional studios, so I'm I'm guessing that they they they're made to take um, you know a lot of use over over years. Um, but yeah, it's I've I've never had any issues with it. It's always been uh, it's always been a really solid piece of kit. Good to know. Um, and then Nikki was wondering, do you happen to sell your city slash building brushes? Um, no, no, I don't. Um, I mean, I was going to try and make a, a load of different ones. Um, and, and then I thought, well, it, it might just get confusing if I just start showing loads and loads of different brushes. But they they really are quite simple to um, make yourself I mean, it's, it's probably a good thing to get in the habit of, of just making um, making a few yourself because sometimes you you might not be able to find the exact um, custom brush that you want so it's um, I think it's good practice to to create your own and then you know it's unique to you as well so um, it won't have anybody else's style but um, but no, um, I, I'd say I, I created, um, 
a video for the for the, the custom wet brush that, that I always use because um, I basically got asked about 100 times a, a week <laughs> if, if I sell it. But I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a video um, and everybody can uh, create their own version of it. Yeah, it is It is the number one question. Lots of questions about brush creation and um, so we should probably have some more tutorials on that topic. You know, I liked what you showed where you can fill shapes. You can also use paintbrushes and create your own brush tips as well. So Yeah, yeah. Something to think about for the future. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's it. I mean, there's so many ways of creating a, a custom brush it's um i mean it's, it's a very simple um process as well so um it's you can you can get some really interesting ideas just experimenting with it so i'd, I'd, I'd recommend everybody gives it a go um and then you know if you if you still really want to um go out and buy people's custom brushes you know that's that's fine but i think um I think it's it's only a, a few steps to create one, so um, I, I wouldn't really want to <laughs> wouldn't really want to sell something that's you know it's only uh, it only looks like that. So <laughs> it it took a, a few seconds to create that. So it's, it, Joe is Joseph is wondering how long it took you to create your final piece. Um, this I I actually did this yesterday. I was I was practicing. Oh my gosh. Um, and it, it it took about three hours, I think. Um, so I I didn't want to try and attempt to uh, create something like this from scratch. So I thought I'd um, I'd do something <laughs> that I could just open the layers. But um, it I mean it can be time consuming just copying the the same information and and just playing around with the layers. But the um, the actual painting time for for this particular environment it's it's not it's not really that long um it's it's a lot of kind of tweaking really i suppose um just just trying to get things to sit right um i didn't actually use any references for this one either i just kind of just made it up but um <laughs> i probably probably should have looked up a few more uh, a few more references before i started Um, but yeah, is it? Well, I'm impressed that you created this yesterday from no reference. I I can't even imagine trying to do that. <laughs> um, okay, let's see, Rick. We've got more questions coming in. How did you draw the fence? The the fence is that. I don't. Is that actually maybe the. The highway? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Is it? Oh, oh, no wonder. It wasn't on. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, the, actually, yeah, this this is a, another custom brush, the, the actual, the actual mesh, if you like. Um, but the, the, the general structure of it is, it's just been made with the, with the scratch tool, so I've just kind of locked it so I'd draw um, a straight line. Oh, it's not going to let me. Um, so yeah, I, I use the scratch tool quite a lot because it's um, it's a nice opaque brush with a sharp edge. Um, I've, I've then just rotated this line and and copied it, and then I've gone over it again. Um, with the uh, with my wet brush that I always use um, when it's been locked, and then that just gives it a little little bit of texture here and there. Um, probably should have used a different colour. Um, but yeah, it's it's just a case of um, just flipping, rotating that part. Um, the mesh is actually created from the inside of an envelope. Um, it was a, a photograph that I took um, of a, it's like a security envelope, so you can't 
you can't see through it and that that was just the pattern on the inside of an envelope um so i, I turned it into a black and white image um selected the the black part of that image and then turned it into um this custom brush uh, and it's now you, know, you say that it doesn't take very much to create these brushes but what you don't understand is the vision in your head that you have when you look at the objects <laughs> then to create yeah. them into brushes is yeah. kind of where some people may be lacking which is why I, I bet there's a ton of people that would be interested in your brushes. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it, I think it was just something that I kept um, seeing on other people's paintings, this this kind of um, hexagon shape. You, you see it a lot on um, sci-fi stuff. I, I've put this on a lot of um, robots and, and stuff like that. Um, you know what but, it makes me think of? My um, tiles for a bathroom because I'm oh, looking yeah. to renovate. But the yeah, hexagon sure. tiles are in right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's it. It's just um, it's just an, a nice repeat pattern. But um, but yeah, that that's where it came from. Um, and in this instance, I've I've used it as a fence, but you could quite easily just um, take a picture of a of a fence, you know, that kind of diamond um, mesh fence um, and then create a brush out of that. You, you just need to have a, a light background and then you can play around with the, with the values. So you just end up with the, uh, with the actual mesh. Mm -hmm. so, um, okay. that, that's, that's very cool. <laughs> um, um, Jeff is wondering if you ever combine reference material like photographs and original drawings or, you know, combine the two together? Um, I, I don't really. I do tend to um, look at a reference and then pick up the information that basically makes up the object. Um, in this instance, like I said earlier, it's just buildings are generally just straight lines um, and they've just got horizontal lines across them and and that's um that's how i'd break the image down in my head and then just try and recreate it but um but yeah i don't really tend to use photographs in in paintings i know a lot of people a lot of people do um it's something i've i thought oh i'll, I'll probably start doing um a bit more of it but, but yeah i you could quite easily um, use uh, a clone brush and then get a photograph and you, you wouldn't have to think about this texture. You know, you could just kind of blend some of that stuff in. But, um, but yeah, I do tend to try and create my own textures just from looking at references rather than use the actual reference. But, but it's, um, it's, it's something you, you could do. You could quite easily do this with um, photographs. You just have to be um, careful whose photographs you're using, obviously. Um, don't know whether that that helps answer the question. I think so. I'll wait and see if anything else comes in here. But right now, now everybody's interested in brush tutorials. Oh, okay. There's a lot of stuff coming in asking me to point them in a direction of that. So we could have a whole session on it, like I said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's quite it's quite open. You can you can create almost um, anything. Um, you can create custom brushes, obviously. From any any black and white pattern, pretty much photographs, or or create the pattern yourself. Um, actually, there is a there is one down here as well. Um, this kind of splat that's on the on the bottom. That's that is 
um, a brush that I've created. Oh. Um, I, I think most of these I've had them for years, and I just I just keep uh, exporting them it's and just, importing them into the next version of Paint. So that yeah, it's your arsenal. Yeah, I, I kind of pick them up every now and then, and then I just hold on to them. I think that's common as well. Artists tend to have a stable of brushes that they love and that end up working for a lot of specific types of work. Let's see. Do you ever yeah. use the perspective tool? Um, yeah. I, that was something that I, I think I was using in probably Painter 2018, I think I, I started to use use that one. Um, I think I, I did a I did a haunted house and um, I think that's on YouTube as well but um, yeah, yeah. I, I like the I like the idea of it I just um, I just don't use it that often I tend to kind of just eye things in um, I mean none of this is in perspective like in correct perspective it's just a kind of a kind of a guess but if it's um if it's quite a loose painting and it's just a sort of a concept then it, it doesn't really matter but the uh, the perspective tool is actually um great because you can snap the brush to um to a line can't you and that's um there's um i mean you've got all grids as well and, you can... and it takes a little bit of just getting it set up for your particular painting because you can adjust things. That's it. You can you can pull all these around, um, and then you can rotate these. I mean, it really depends what what kind of uh, perspective you want. But yeah, these these lines are really useful when you um, when you snap to them. Um, I just tend to go with a little bit more kind of uh, free form and just kind of um, see what happens with it. Um, but but yeah, if you're trying to do something really precise, this um, this would be the way to go, to be honest. Yours looks pretty bang on to me without using it's, um, any kind of perspective. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, I mean, yeah, some of, I think some of this probably should have been a bit bigger um yeah I, I recorded this and i think i put it on youtube last night and the, this building it was a bit bigger and then it was a bit smaller and then it was a bit bigger again so i wasn't really sure what was going on there well um, it looks great now um nikki is wondering how did you do the red lights was it just like an individual brush dab uh, the red lights. I think I. I think I just put it on with the the scratch tool. Um, I just kind of drops. You know, I'll see if I. So um, again, it's this kind of opaque. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Um, it's a, it's a good kind of solid color, and you. I mean, you can drop these in. But then I've got a, a shortcut to basically soften things. So I'll then kind of like oh. blur them out. Okay. Um, obviously, you keep pushing that that up, they they basically disappear. But um, I mean, you could have you could probably just do that with an airbrush instead. But I like the the control. Um, so I basically have. Um, a few different layers of these dots and then the ones in the background you can always take that right out so it virtually disappears and then the ones in the foreground would still be still be um, really bright and holding some yeah. sort of hey that's a cool technique <laughs> um, but yeah it's, it's just the just the soften um, I think it's just in yeah, under effects, I think. Focus, maybe. Um, oh, focus, yeah, yeah. Soften. Um, but yeah, I've, I've just got a few shortcuts there. Um, it's 
it's actually a tool that I use quite a lot when you've got something in the background and I've blurred out most of these these layers in the background. If they look too sharp um, in contrast to the foreground, then obviously it begins to look a bit flat. So you want to try and just blur those out a little bit. And that's that's why every time I open it, it's, it's always really small. But I'm just changing just a little bit of the edge control. Um, if you if you have your image locked, though, um, it won't blur out the edge. So make sure you've got the uh, preserved transparency turned off when you when you try and um, soften something. But it'll just soften inside of the of the shape, and you'll still have yeah. that crisp edge. Um, but that's something that's that's caught me out a few times. <laughs> I don't know how much more you had planned to cover because we have just about 10 minutes left until the top of the hour. Um, but uh, I had another question that might take a couple seconds to show. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Pour, pour now away. that you showed your really handy shortcut palette, there's some questions around um, how do you add commands to the palette and some people probably don't even know how to get the brushes onto the palette. Um, okay. The yeah, if this this is something I because I only ever do it when I move over to a, a new version. I, I tend to um, struggle myself remembering how to do this. But um, the the brushes. Um, I mean, once you've once you've created this panel, you can just drag the brushes in from from over on the, um, I mean, I've got this recently used yeah. um, panel here. You can just hold shift and pull yeah, you, whatever you, brushes you want off, yeah. yeah. Um, and you just let go. And then I've just changed the, I mean, you can have the um, the, the icon or um, I've just changed them to text view so so I know, I know what they are. Um, the... I mean, I've got the free transform and soften. Um, I've got all these kind of things in there. Um, so this is like a little area of um, sort of color correction or editing kind of tools. And the, these are brushes. Um, these ones glow and blur. Those are sort of after effects, if you like. Um, some of them are just kind of like textures, um, but uh, the how, how hmm. <laughs> it's just yep. trying to nope, remember. you're right there. So custom palette, and you add a command, and that will add it to the palette that you have selected. Um, yeah, and then I think you just um, you just you literally go to the menu. And make your selection, and then it creates. Yeah, yeah, and then it will shortcut. Yeah, and then it will pop up. Uh, but yeah, and you can also just while we're talking about shortcuts in the preferences um, for some of our items in Painter, we don't have shortcuts for everything. You can go in and assign your own shortcuts or customize anything that you want to. Right from your uh, yeah, is that? And I have uh, to re um, customize keys all the way down at the bottom. Ask customize keys, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that gives you access to everything in Painter, and you can open each one and look at the shortcuts. You can print this out so that you can learn all the shortcuts if you want to in Painter as well. But as you can see, there's a lot of items that don't have shortcuts assigned, so you could assign your own if it's something that you use regularly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, I've just got a, a few on the um, on the tablet that I use, so... Uh, oh, right, I think, yeah. I think um, just select and deselect is, is probably the, the only hotkeys that I use on the, on the keyboard. Um, but yeah, there is um, there's 
plenty of ways to to customize um, the uh, the whole the whole layout of everything and just just helps speed things up really just having these you don't have to go through the menus you can just drop them in here um, just click on them and you know I've got these um, I'm sure what that's actually selecting at the moment. It's... Okay, so and um, I've got this uh, just color um, shortcut there, and it, I mean the good thing about this is it actually remembers what what the levels were on the last one. So if you wanted to adjust colors on say five or six of these buildings, you you got one of them the way you wanted it to look. You can then go through, keep clicking on that, and on each layer, as soon as you open it, it will apply these settings to those buildings. So I color correct this one, then I can just click on that one, click on that one, click on that one, and I wouldn't have to keep playing around with these, trying to figure out, oh, was it a bit darker or was it a bit lighter? Um, so that's um, that's a that's a really good little um, technique just for, I mean, you could also group these as well and then move them around and stuff like that. That's, um, there's, um, there's plenty of ways that you can speed things up by using um, these, these shortcuts and, um, and groups. Um, you can free transform a whole group of things as well. That's um, that's something that I tend to do quite a lot. And you can drag the whole the whole layer around, but these are all still still separate. I'm in this wondering if you ever use undo, and if so, how many state have you changed the number of undo levels, which I think we default to 30. Um, yeah, I, I, I will use it, but probably only sort of once or twice. Um, I, I won't have it any higher than the um, than the standard setting. It's more of a case if, uh, if I just kind of do something, do two or three lines or something, I might be like, oh, I should have just done one line there and then I'll <laughs> control and Z, but yeah, I don't really tend to go back that far that often. Um, I think I used to, and, and now I'm a bit more kind of like, well, I can cut it out or erase it or just try and change it into something that, that works rather than just get rid of it. Sometimes it, it's good to have a mistake in there and it will force you into thinking, oh, I need to do something to correct it. And it, it won't be the um, the path you necessarily would have taken if everything went correct the first time. That that's the the happy accidents um, kind of theory. It, it pushes you to think outside the box. So um, I'd probably recommend not to um, try and undo too many times. Just try and push through <laughs> and make it work. All right, thank you. And then Michael is wondering, do you use special kind of brushes for steam or smoke, like what we see in your scene here? Um, yeah, that's that's just the 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 custom wet brush that I tend to use um, for for quite a lot of things, really. Um, it's oh, on that. So let's. I mean, that's hmm. kind of that's kind of what it looks like. If I just, I'll just so show your you. So dad that. has a bunch of variation. Yeah, it's it's got a nice kind of textured edge. Um, there's a little bit of texture in the middle as well. So it's um, that's what I've used to paint the clouds with. Um, this smoke's the same thing. I've got a obviously the uh, pressure sensitivity on the tablet helps so you're getting a variation 
in um, the opacity and the scale at the same time. So I can, and this is also um, a mixer brush as well. So it, um, you can pick up the underlying color and if you use it really lightly, it does, does tend to like mix. Um, obviously I've, I've got it set on black here, but you can see it's not, it's not black. It's, it's actually, it's coming up like reds and purples in there. So it's, um, yeah, it's a, it's a really kind of versatile brush to be honest. Um, but that's, that's all I've used there. Um, it's the, it's the same thing. Um, uh, you know, I've kind of, I just turn it off. It's, it just, um, just gives it a little bit more depth and basically it shows that the fence is there. That, that was kind of the idea. Um, we've got the atmosphere as well, but the, the mesh on the fence probably wouldn't be as visible. So, um, I've kind of thrown that in there. Um, some of this area down here I wasn't particularly happy with, so I, I just kind of covered it up. Um, but yeah, there's a little bit coming out of some of these buildings here and there. Um, but yeah, that's that's the uh, that's the custom custom wet brush. Um, I wasn't expecting you to say wet brush because I know a lot of people use particles like for smoke and steam and whatnot. So that was. Neat. Yeah, um, I, I've just kept the the original name. I, I've had that brush since um, I think it was probably painted 2012, and I think it was just called wet brush. So um, I think it's just because it's a it's like a mix of brush. So it um, so it was just called called the wet brush at the time. Um, yeah, and I've just used a, a custom dab and then slightly changed a few of the settings here and there, but, but yeah. All right. Well, very nice. Um, so I have one more question, which is perfect because we're right at the top of the hour, and Christopher is wondering about your machine specs. What kind of machine are you working on? Uh, oh, okay. Um, I've got the Dell in Spiron. Um That's the... That's the one that I've had um, for the last two years. Um, it's a Dell Inspiron 777, I think it is. Um, I think it's um, 16 gig RAM, um, but it's it's a it's a really good machine. It's um, the all the all the things um, that, that you need for um, the latest version of Painter whenever I've tried to, um, uh, I was just trying to think where the, uh, can I, can I run the performance? The, I can't remember. The brush accelerator? Yes, yeah, just trying to remember where that is. Um, yeah, you can open, it's from the welcome screen. So if you go to help. Oh, yeah. Okay. And welcome. You can also get there from preferences, and there's also a panel that you can open up, but a few different um, places. Oh, yeah, your system is good, considering yeah. especially where you're presenting online, because everything that you have open impacts the performance of Painter as well. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's more than enough. Um, so it, it exceeds. Um, I think my my last machine um, I had the Dell XPS um, that didn't have the AVX2. So mm. so this one has um, has been a lot quicker. Okay. And I, I was I mean I was genuinely surprised how how much faster. Um, Painted 2021 was um, in comparison to uh, Painted 2020. The I thought the performance um, last year made a, a huge difference, and it, it seems to have made a huge difference this year as well. Um, I've been using a lot of the great to hear. The, yeah, the, the, the thick paint brushes now um, are are a lot a lot faster. 
Um, and this, I mean, this this custom brush. I mean, it's like that's like seven hundred and seven hundred and fifty percent <laughs> work. Yeah. It's uh, Yeah, it's. Uh, All right. Well, that's good to hear. So, anybody, if you have tried twenty twenty one, even if you're using the trial, or if you haven't run the brush accelerator, highly recommend doing so because that will analyze your system and calibrate painter accordingly. And you don't have to continue to run that. If you run it one time, that should be sufficient um, to optimize your system. So I can't believe an hour has gone by already, but it has. <laughs> um, and I, I thank everybody for all of your questions. I think we were actually able to address all of them and some of you brought up some very good points, things that we could have tutorials on, like creation of brushes and also how to save color sets a variety of different ways. So with that, Davy, I want to thank you very, very much. I, I really appreciate you coming up with a brand new image as well. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> it's, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's good practice for me, but um, yeah, thanks, um, thanks for having me again. Thank you, and we are thrilled to have you as a painter master, so um, we should touch base in the near future to discuss that as well. And for those of you, please look in the, the questions panel. I put Davey's YouTube link in there. He's got great tutorials. I'll also have that in the follow-up email with the recording tomorrow. And if you're dying to see the webinar on replay tonight, you'll be able to find it on YouTube Painter Tutorials as soon as I have a chance to take a look and pop it up there for you guys. Um, so with that, I guess we'll go ahead and end the webinar. Um, we hope to see you next month. We have Erin Rutten, who is going to be presenting. So please join us next time. And Davey, if there's anything else that you want to say right now, go ahead. Um, that, there's nothing I can really think of to add but um but yeah i'd just like to say if you haven't tried the, the new version it's um you can obviously try the the free um download so i, I highly recommend you give it a go all right thanks davy thanks everybody for joining stay safe and healthy and we'll talk to you next month